Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple just released the second major update for Mac OS Sonoma 14.2. This is a huge update that includes many changes, fixes, and enhancements, and we're going to go over all that and more. Plus, we're going to talk about OpenCore Legacy Patcher, and in your unsupported Mac, we've got four separate test devices here to go over, plus a brand new update, 1.3.0 came out, and there's an important note that you need to know before you update if you have a specific Mac. So we got a lot to cover. Let's jump in and get started. Mac OS Sonoma 14.2 was released on December 11th at 12 noon Central Daylight Time. Along with that update, Apple also released associated updates for Mac OS Ventura 13.6.3 and Mac OS Monterey 12.7.2. What's important about the Ventura and Sonoma updates is, is that it finally unifies the update. In the previous two updates, Apple split both of these in two different build versions because it had to be covering for the new M3 Macs. Now it's unified, so you can install this update on any Mac. Apple also released Safari 17.2, Xcode 15.1, and Xcode Command Line Tools 15.1. On the iOS side, we've got iOS 17.2, iOS 16.7.2 was released for any iOS device that cannot install iOS 17, iPadOS 17.2, AudioOS for your HomePod 17.2, tvOS 17.2, and watchOS 10.2. Our demonstration Mac here for the update is a 2020 13-inch M1 MacBook Pro. To get to the software update, all you need to do is click on software update once it's checked here, or click on general the software update, and you should see the Mac OS Sonoma 14.2 update available for updates. If you want to get more information, you can click on more info, and you can see the full list of all the changes and fixes in this release. All you need to do is click on update now, and agree and type in our password. This Mac here is on 14.1.2, the latest version. So it's going to be the smallest possible update download size to be able to install here. And we're going to see this in just a second here. We've got 2.68 gigabytes. So that's going to be one of the smallest size possible. And again, this is a big update with a bunch of feature and enhancements and bug fixes in it. So it's a lot bigger than our previous small security updates. If you are running an open core legacy patch or unsupported Mac, update size is going to to be a lot larger. On this 2013 Mac Pro, the update size is going to be at least 13 gigabytes in size. And that is totally normal for your unsupported Mac, 13.36 gigabytes if you're on an unsupported Mac with OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So we'll let this download here and finish, and then we're gonna see how long it takes to be able to prepare, stage, and install this update. Okay, we're back up after the update. What is the build version of 14.2? 2364. Now this is important because if you were running a beta, there was an RC2 or release candidate to 14.2. So that was 23, RC1 was 23C63. And then they came out with a 23C64, which is RC2. So if you installed RC2, you are on the public release and ready to go. But if you are on RC1 or any of the betas, you have to install the latest update to get to 23C64. How long did it take to install the 14.2 update? Well, you can see that I keep track of all the updates that have been installed on this particular Mac so far. And for the preparing phase, seven minutes. After it restarted to install the update, five minutes. And for a total of 12 minutes. And now that took longer than the smaller security update, seven minutes and eight minutes for 14.1 and 14.1.2. But compared to the 14.1 update, which took a total of 21 minutes, it went a lot faster. Now let's talk about the Apple Silicon firmware, the OS loader, and the T2 Bridge OS. For 14.2, the firmware was updated to 10.151.61.4. What's interesting is the last three releases, it remained the same. So there was definitely some changes there. And the same thing with the OS loader version was also updated to the associated 61.4. Now, when I talk about the system firmware and the OS loader version, you can get to there by going about this Mac to system information. And this is where you'll see it under the hardware overview. System firmware version will be right here and the OS loader Older version will be right here. If you're running an older version of Mac OS like Ventura or Monterey, this number will be associated with that version of Mac OS. For Intel Macs, the T2 Bridge OS update was updated to 21.16.2057. And the same thing with Apple Silicon, the Bridge OS update was not updated in the previous three updates. 
Apple did release a full installer package for Mac OS Sonoma 14.2 so you can build a USB installer or reinstall fresh. And again, like I mentioned earlier, it is a unified build. And here's all those forked builds for the M3 Macs only that I was talking about that made it all confusing when you were trying to figure out which version you needed. So it's great that that's fully unified for 14.2. Now for Apple Silicon Macs, the same is here for the IPSW Restore file that was released. And that is unified here. And and Apple predefined and Apple it now made that version for all Apple Silicon Macs. Safari was also updated to 17.2 and I provided standalone download installers for Ventura and Mac OS Monterey. All right, now let's go over some of the new features of the 14.2 update. First of all, there is a new keyboard layout for the Sami languages. So to get to that, you can go to system settings and type in keyboard, then go into the keyboard settings, then go into the text input, click on edit, click on the plus, and you can type in Sami. And you can see all the new languages here. On the previous update on 14.2, all we had over 14.1 was Northern Sami. 14.2 also brings over the specific M3 MacBook Pro wallpapers. All you need to do is scroll down and click on show all and you can see all the new wallpapers including the new space black wallpaper. So that Apple added a Shazam music recognition. So if we go down to the control center and system settings and then we scroll down, we can see the new Shazam music recognition. To be able to use it, all you need to do is click on show in menu bar or show in control center. And then to get it to work, all you need to do is click on the icon and then click on the circle. And then you can start listening to the songs and it'll be able to recognize it right here and then show you the song title and the artist. What'll happen is you'll see the orange circle that shows that the Max microphone is being used and then it will detect the song and show you right below the main option here. So if you want to be able to see that album, you can actually just click on this here and then it'll open it up in Apple Music. And there it is. You can see this is from Bruce Hornsby's The Way It Is album and it found the song and you can preview it or you can purchase it. So that's a really cool feature. While we're in Apple Music, we can also see the next change, which is in general settings inside Apple Music, but I'm gonna to have to do a phone a friend to Zolotech, who does excellent work on his coverage of Mac, tvOS, watchOS, and iOS and iPadOS updates, where you have to be signed in to Apple Music to be able to see this section. And you can see the difference here when you're signed out of Apple Music. And the changes is the use listening history, which basically says that the music history can be disabled in focus so that the music that you listen to does not appear in the recently played section or influence your recommendations. And at the same time, an additional change is the favorite song section. You can see that he has this highlighted here that all the songs that you have favorited if you click on favorite will be all now grouped together in one playlist so you can see those and get to those at any time and thanks for Aaron for being able to pull these and show these off in his video the next change revolves around autofill. There's now an enhanced autofill that identifies fields in PDF documents and other forms that enable you to populate them with information such as names, addresses from your contacts. So this is a Microsoft transcript. And if you wanted to fill out this address area, if this is blank in your contacts, it can pull contact lists. So then it would start filling out the name and the address and city name and phone number. Now let's look at the changes in the weather app. Got 14.1 and 14.2 here, and I compare them so you can see those minute differences. Everything looks pretty much the same here. We've got the same city. When you go into one of the days, and you can look at the precipitation, so we'll double click on Friday, and then we'll scroll down, we can see this looks pretty much the same on the Friday over here, except that the new changes is that now you have precipitation totals instead of that daily summary. And now you can see that they're predicting over this day for Friday, December 15th, we got 0.15 inches of snow and 0.05 inches of rain. There's also a new wind map that allows you to quickly access wind patterns and access the animated wind map overlay to prepare for forecasted wind conditions for the next 24 hours. 
I also wanted to add that there's a new background and you can see that with the 14.2 update, it shows the status of what it is right now. For example, sunny. And in 14.1, it's just this static sun that comes from the left-hand side. So there's also a change to the weather widgets. Three new widgets were added. So if you want to get to the widgets, right click on the desktop and then click edit widgets. So here's 14.1, there's three widgets available and on 14.2, and there's our new weather widgets here. We've got details, daily forecast, and sunrise and sunset. Now you have a couple of different options of what you wanna do. You can just take the widget from here and then drag it right to your desktop. And when you can see that there's a little line there that helps you align it or a little square to help you kind of snap it into place. But wonder if you wanted to add that into your notifications bar, you can do that too. Just click on the notifications, then scroll down and then click edit widgets. And then you can drag any widget that you want, including those new weather ones right into your notifications. Grab that and then we can scroll up here and then add it right next to our calendar. And there's our snap in for the new widgets. Now let's look at some changes in the clock app, 14.1 versus 14.2. You can see now we have additional timers. We can now can add multiple timers to let you run several timers simultaneously to create a name for each timer. So let's try that out. We'll do timer one and then we'll hit start and then we'll do timer two and then we can do timer three. and there's our multiple timers. There's also a new timer preset function that helps you quickly start a timer with a range of preset options. So we can click that plus button again, and then we can go down to presets and we can just say, hey, I just want a one hour. Or hey, I just want a 10 minutes. So you don't have to go in there and manually select those and there they go right away without even you having to click start. And finally, you have the recent timers that we already selected here as many times as you select. So if you wanted to get a custom one, like that 15 minute one, just click on that play button here and I'll start that timer right there for our pre-select 15 minute three, number three timer. And that's the changes to clock. And the next changes are around the messages app. Now I don't use the messages app on Mac OS. So I'm going to have to use my second phone, a friend to Aaron Zolo of Zolo Tech's YouTube channel to be able to show some of the changes around the messages app. Now, one of the first changes is around the stickers. You can see here in his example that instead of having to go down here, click this and click stickers, you can right click and add a sticker to any of the conversations really quickly. There's also when you have a long thread of conversation, there's a new catch up arrow that allows you to easily jump to the first unread message in a conversation by clicking the arrow visible at the top right corner. Now this is kind of the same thing as like if you use discord chat, unread messages, you click on the, the blue bar and it brings you right to that so you can catch up on the entire conversation. And finally, Finally, there's a new contact key verification that provides an automatic alert for contact verification codes to help verify people who are facing extraordinary digital threats are messaging only with the people that they intend to do. So for example, the press or anybody in politics to be able to make sure that they are the correct person and no one's trying to intercept that person or be a fake contact. And thanks again for Zolotech. Make sure you check out and subscribe to his channel. He makes the best iOS update videos out there. Now let's take a look at the security content for the 14.2 update. There is 19 individual security vulnerabilities that is patched in this update. There is also two WebKit vulnerabilities that are patched in the built-in Safari 17.2. Now let's look at what's new in Enterprise for Mac OS Sonoma. In 14.2, we have five individual fixes. The first one is the login password is correctly accepted at the lock screen when MDM has configured the login window to hide admin users. Then there's the devices no longer fail to complete extensible SSO authentication that requires multiple steps. Declarative software updates install by enforced date when the Mac computer is asleep. An exclamation point is no longer shown under manage login items in system settings. And finally, home no longer prompts for location access after updating. We covered that in the 14.1 update when that would come up for users to be able to access location services for the home app. And that's no longer gonna pop up, so that's a great fix. Now let's take a look at the Geekpen 6 benchmark scores. For 14.1.2, we had a 2402 and an 8748. We got a 2389 and an 8713, so a little bit less, but only 10 points can be the difference between one test and another, so that's right on target. And you can take a look at all my benchmarks under Mr. Macintosh blog on the Geekbench browser. 
Now let's take a look at OpenCore Legacy Patcher for your unsupported Mac for Mac OS Sonoma 14.2. Right off the bat, we've got a brand new OpenCore Legacy Patch update 1.3.0 that was released. Now we've got a warning message right away. And this is why I always say that before you install an update, always check the page to make sure there's any specific notes like this that might affect your machine. We've got multiple families of MacBook Pros, Mac Mini, and iMacs. And these are all based around the 3802 metal-based GPUs that are Ivy Bridge, Haswell, and NVIDIA Kepler machines. So you can see if your Mac's one of these, you definitely wanna make sure that you update to 1.3.0 OpenCore Legacy Patcher before you try to update to Mac OS 14.2. That is a definite warning to make sure that we get that going first. Now let's take a look at some of our test machines. Here's our fleet of Macs. We've got four different Macs that will try to cover every single generation of different configuration that you might be in when you're trying to install the 14.2 update. We've got our 2017 15 inch so we can test that touch bar as you can see here down here. We've got our late 2012 Mac mini that falls into that warning for the Ivy Bridge Intel GPUs right here listed so we can make sure that we're installing okay on that situation. We also have our Mac Pro late 2013 that we are gonna go through a demo in the video coming up after this. That's gonna go over all the aspects of the 1.3.0 OpenCore Legacy Patch. I'm gonna walk you through making sure you update properly. And then finally, we have our non-metal 17 inch 2011 MacBook Pro that installed properly and no issues with 14.2 and the 1.3.0. As long as you install 1.3.0 first, even if you're not a part of that list of machines, I always recommend updating first, then installing the update and making sure that you check that page to make sure there's no issues with your particular hardware. Keep an eye on, out for my video coming out after this that goes into all the detail and a full walkthrough on the update. So do I recommend installing the 14.2 update? There's two different situations. Are you on a supported Mac or an unsupported Mac with OpenCore Legacy Patcher? If you're on a supported Mac, I definitely recommend installing the 14.2 update for all of the changes, all the bug fixes and the new features, along with all the security fixes. Now, if you are on an unsupported Mac, that is a two-sided situation because if you're already using Sonoma and it's working fine for you and you've already tested out, yes, install this update. But if you are needing a very reliable machine that doesn't have any issues when an update is installed, I recommend fully staying on macOS Ventura or macOS Monterey until Sonoma is more stable when it gets into its security-based releases next year after WWDC and macOS 15 is being released. And that's because Apple is making so many changes to Sonoma right now that it has already caused multiple issues with the patcher and the dev team and McCullough and Dina Kay and everyone is doing the best they can to keep up with all these changes. So that's why I recommend keeping on a previous version if you really need a reliable solid machine that does not have any issues or you can and deal with the issues when they happen. That's my recommendation for the 14.2 update. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.